Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be adding a music shutoff interface to the fire alarm system. So down in the basement I have a fire alarm system as you see. That's what I make a lot of videos about. But what you might not also see is that there's an audio system up here. This is a homemade speaker system that I just rigged up. It's pretty simple. Um, there's just speakers all over the basement. They play music. Um, they can connect to the TV when there's games going on. And in general it's just a pretty standard audio system. They just run off an amplifier. Um, but today we're going to be adding a music shutoff option so that way when the fire alarm system goes off, the music or whatever audio is going through the speakers is overridden by the fire alarm. Now you might be wondering why it's important for the fire alarm to shut off the music and I'm going to demonstrate that for you in a second. This right here is actually a voice evacuation fire alarm system. So unlike the traditional horn strobes, there's actually a speaker behind the grill if you look carefully. But what that means is that these are capable of delivering voice messages, tones, anything you might think of. So when the alarm system activates, it's gonna play a tone and a message, something like this. Attention, attention. An emergency has been reported in the building. Please cease operation and leave the building utilizing the nearest exit or fire exit. So as you can see, this plays a message. It's very audible, it's pretty loud. Uh, it's decent quality, of course, because it has to be, because it's an emergency communication system. But let's go ahead and see what this sounds like when there's loud music playing in the background. So I have my iPad connected to the speaker system. This right here is no copyright music because I don't want to get a copyright strike. But I'm gonna go ahead and play this. Fun fact, these speakers are actually capable of playing music themselves. In a lot of cases, fire alarm systems are used to play music. Uh, but in those cases, obviously, when the fire alarm activates, uh, any other audio is bypassed immediately in favor of the fire alarm audio. So similarly, this should happen here. But let's go ahead and play this music and turn it up really, really loud and then pull the fire alarm. Now, obviously you can still hear the voice message. You can definitely see the strobe lights, which is partially why you want visual fire alarm signals as well. But ultimately, the effect of the fire alarm is much worse than it would be if there was no audio in the background. Yes, it's possible if you were standing close to these fire alarm speakers, you can still hear it. But it's really difficult for these fire alarm speakers to compete with higher quality sound systems, especially if this is a large venue like a concert hall. Uh, maybe there's some sort of huge event going on. Where you have some absolutely massive and loud speakers going on. But it's extremely important in an emergency that emergency messages are very clear. Um, seconds definitely count in the event of an emergency. So especially in a room with a lot of people in it, being able to clearly hear emergency communications is really, really important. So for that reason, it's super important that whenever a fire alarm system goes off, especially if it's conveying a message like this, any other sounds turn off immediately. So that's what we're going to try and accomplish today. This is the audio system right here. As you can see, it's very rudimentary. Um, it's completely homemade, but the fundamental part is this amplifier module, which is really, really cheap. I think you got it for a few dollars off Amazon or something like that. But uh, it's actually really, really good quality. I haven't noticed any big issues at all. The music sounds great, but um, it has a left and right port. I'm just using one of the sides. And again, I don't really have any issues with that. Um, it plugs into my iPad or any other aux device. And it also has a switch, which directs 12 volts into it um, there's a volume adjustment knob doesn't really matter all you need to know is that the speaker output comes up and it goes into a speaker this is the first speaker right now it's all spliced right here so this speaker is spliced in and then it goes behind the wall to the rest of the speakers um, this is sitting in a vent um, usually there's a cover over it but uh, usually I don't think it's an issue it's an intake vent uh, if anyone has any HVAC advice 
Um, you can let me know if it's actually a problem to have a speaker here, but in general, we haven't noticed any issues. Just kind of hides it and it's a convenient place to put it. But um, I'm thinking first I have to unsplice this because the way I want to do this is I want the uh, fire alarm system uh, where there's a relay to automatically just cut the wire here basically effectively and just shut off all audio signal from the speakers completely. So while I'm doing this whole fire alarm thing, I've decided to kind of rewire this audio system. So originally the audio came up from this wire that's just kind of taped to the wall, but I decided that this looks kind of stupid. The main idea of it was that I wanted this to be non-intrusive like everything else and kind of temporary, but I decided that I'll just drill a small hole here and then feed the wire for the audio through the wall so I don't have to have this exposed. It's such a small hole anyways, but um, I'm gonna rewire this. So this is the signal in, and then this is the line that I'm gonna break for my relay. Um, so that when the fire alarm sounds, this main audio line is gonna be cut and the audio will stop. But if you want a more detailed video on this homemade audio system, I would be happy to make one. Uh, Y'all know I love to talk. But uh, just let me know in the comment section if this is something that interests you. But for now, just rewiring this so this whole part here is going to be removed. And uh, hopefully it'll look a little better. All right, so the audio system has now been rewired. And I really like how it looks. As you can see, there's no wire going in. You can really not even tell that there's a speaker behind the vent, which is kind of the idea. So now we have to work on the fire alarm side of things. So, of course, I've just opened up this relay module. This has always been mounted on the side of the fire panel, and it's an external alarm relay because I ran out of my onboard relays. But um, it's basically the same thing. It's triggered by the fire alarm, and I have one relay being used right now to drive the voice evacuation system. The other relay is open, and this is what's going to be used for the audio system shutdown. So basically, I'm going to run a uh, fire alarm cable, just a pair of 18 two cables, um, or just a 18 two cable because it's two conductor and it's just going to go up this way to the speaker system uh connection which of course is not in a junction box um anyone who knows more about av can criticize me if you want but uh, my understanding is that it's not really necessary to keep low voltage connections especially speaker system stuff like this um in a junction box but if it's necessary someone enlightens me i will gladly do it i'm using these cheap little wago knockoff connectors again People always talk about Wagos like they're bad. Um, the actual name brand Wagos, I'm perfectly comfortable using for high voltage electricity, but um, these knockoff ones that I got off a certain online retailer are fairly decent for making these temporary connections. Um, of course, I wouldn't use this for any sort of important thing like a high voltage electrical system because the failure um, risk of that is pretty serious. That could be a house fire. But in this case, if this fails, uh, it's just inconvenience. But um, here's the signal in, which I've labeled. And all I have to do is leave one side connected. So this will always be connected. And then I'll break this connection here. And basically, when the fire alarm system is in normal condition, this will be a closed circuit. And then when the alarm activates and the relay trips, this will open up. So we should use the normally closed part of our relay. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down these staples because I loosened them a little bit to run my new wire. Um, I also might use this small little staple gun with some micro staples into the side of the stud like that just to make the uh, wire a little more inconspicuous. Even though it is a demo system and it's a little bit rudimentary, like I said, I still always want my work to look professional. Here at our relay, you can see this is the new wire that goes up. I put a little bit of black ink on it to show that this is more of a switch leg and not something that carries actual power. And then on the other side of things, here we have our other end. Of course, I labeled it so it says fire system, normally closed relay. And then I used my black Sharpie so that way this isn't confused for a power line. So again, I've gone ahead and broken the uh, main speaker circuit here. And I'm going to splice one lead of this leg here with one hand. This might be a little bit difficult. So these two go together, and then the other end of the switch like goes into the rest of the speakers, which I'll clamp down like that. So now you kind of see how this works. This is normally closed. So under normal circumstances, power flows, or the speaker circuit is connected here. It goes through this, goes through the relay, and then into the speakers. When the fire alarm is activated, this relay breaks. So now there's nothing going to the speakers, and it's not possible for anything to be coming through the audio system. So I'm going to go ahead and put that insulation back. It looks like nothing ever happened here, and we can go ahead and test it. The job is now done, the fire alarm system has been worked on, and the audio system is a heck of a lot neater. So the only thing left to do is actually functionally test it. I have some Mozart here, and this is too old to be copyrighted, so we're going to pump it nice and loud through the speakers. 
and I'm gonna pull the fire alarm on the other end and the hope is that the music will automatically turn off. Nothing's coming through the speakers, even though the iPad is still playing. Attention! An emergency has been reported in the building. Please. As you can see, as soon as I silence the alarm, the music turns back on. In this case, the relay is silenceable which is uh, important because the relay here also runs the voice evacuation system. But um, in some jurisdictions, that might not be okay. In this jurisdiction, it is because there's no jurisdiction for this demonstration supplementary fire alarm system. I hope that you've learned something important today about fire safety. Of course, down here in this residential basement with very low occupancy, it's very unlikely that the audio shutdown feature will ever be necessary for an actual emergency. However, in a larger space, such as an auditorium, anywhere where there's a large gathering of people and loud music, having people easily understand the fire alarm message can make the difference between life and death because seconds count in an emergency. Thank you for watching this video. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, and take care.